Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1,186 of our trek, and it is Worldview Wednesday. Creating a biblical worldview is important in order to have a proper perspective on today's current events. To establish a biblical worldview, it is required that we also have a proper understanding of God and His Word. On our Worldview Wednesday episodes, we are in a series in which we are covering another detailed review of a book from one of today's most prominent Hebrew scholars, Dr. Michael S. Heiser. We are taking a deep dive and will share Dr. Heiser's insights into the question, which is also the title of his book, What Does God Want? And today we'll look at What is Discipleship? The gospel is intended to be transformative. Anyone who has embraced the gospel has been transformed according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. What does that actually look like? You may recall the answer to this question. Last week I said a disciple was a follower, specifically a follower of Jesus. I defined following as imitating or imaging Jesus. As it says, he chose him to become like his son, which is our ultimate destiny. Romans chapter 8 verse 29, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18, and Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. Our motive for imitating Jesus is not to make God love us so that he'll let us into heaven. God already loved each of us while we were still sinners, according to Romans chapter 5, verse 8, and while we were still his enemies, according to Romans chapter 5, verse 10. We get to heaven, we become part of God's family, when we believe the gospel. On our own, we are lost, in need of a Savior, according to Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Alienated from God, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. When that is our situation, God already loved us. He didn't wait until we cleaned up our act to love us. Our motive for imitating Jesus is also not to keep God loving us so that we'll be saved in the end. That which cannot be achieved by performance cannot be lost by performance. Salvation has nothing to do about our own worth or merit. It has everything to do with someone, and that someone is Jesus, and what he did for us in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be an offering for our sins, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. We can take no credit for our salvation. It's Jesus that gets all the credit. That is why it is important that we are thinking clearly about discipleship. We need to think carefully about how all of this applies to discipleship. Because of the performance trap, which we talked about earlier, we need to have a clear grasp on the fact that salvation and discipleship are not the same thing. Many believers unconsciously begin to add their own works or performance to the gospel because of the guilt of their sin. The result is spiritual bondage not the rich and satisfying life that Jesus wants us to have, according to John 10, verse 10. Salvation is a gift given to us by God when we believe the gospel. It is undeserved. Nevertheless, God offers it in spite of our sin and hostility toward Him. Discipleship is something we do as a result of believing the gospel. We imitate Jesus to show our love for Him and for God. Jesus was the ultimate imager of God, so we want to live the same way Jesus did. There are a lot of other reasons to live like Jesus, to live a holy life. Earning God's love is not one of them. Salvation doesn't cost us anything. It is free to all who believe the gospel. Discipleship, however, does cost us something. Following Jesus is often not easy. Being a disciple requires making choices, And his choices are to love and honor God and to treat people for what they really are, fellow imagers of God that he loves and wants to bring into his family through the gospel. Think about Jesus' own life. It wasn't easy. As the Bible says in 1 Peter 2, verse 21, 
Therefore, God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. Jesus lived a life of sacrifice. He put God first, followed by his neighbor, which means everyone else. Jesus lived this way not so God would love him or to be happy with him. God loved Jesus already, long before he ever came and did works or performed to fulfill the covenant. He loved Jesus based on his own words. John chapter 17, verse 24. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. Following Jesus can be hard. Since no believer is like Jesus when they first believe, and since it is just hard to live like Jesus consistently. Every disciple needs a change of heart, which the Bible calls repentance. Every disciple needs a change of heart about his behavior. I know that I did. There were things that I had to stop doing and things I had to start doing. But none of those makes God love me. He already loved me. Jesus did what he did because he loved God, and so must we. Jesus lived a certain way to help others believe in him and in God's plan. So must we. Jesus knew why he was here on earth and how he had to die a horrible death on our behalf. But he also trusted God's plan and power. He would rise from the dead and be with the Father once more. We must have the same eternal perspective. The world isn't our real home. It is only temporary. The next one is permanent. Because of what Jesus did, we will inherit everlasting life in that world, leaving this one behind. The goal of our life should be to show our loyalty and gratitude to the one who saved us and help others enter God's family. But what if we fail? What if we sin? Well, we will do both. God knows that. He knows humans pretty well. He created us. He knows who we are. But he already loved us before we had the slightest interest in doing anything to love him back. He loved us when we were his enemies, as we read while we were still sinners. God loved us before we were in his family. Why would he love us less or stop loving us now that we are in his family? When we sin and fail, he forgives us. He wants us to believe and then get back to imitating Jesus. And that will conclude our lesson for this week from Dr. Heiser's book, What Does God Want? Next Worldview Wednesday, we will discover why we should live like Jesus. I believe that you'll find each Worldview Wednesday an interesting topic to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow we will continue with our three-minute humor nugget that will provide you with a bit of cheer, which will help you to lighten up and live a rich and satisfying life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,185 treks or read the Wisdom Journal, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.